Parappa the Rapper, the humble little game that many say sparked the rhythm genre, a truly unique idea for its time, and even to this day. The character is known far and wide, he was originally pushed to be the mascot for the PlayStation 1, he's shown up in PlayStation All-Stars, and even had not just one, but two animes based on the series. But how did the lovable underdog get his start? To answer that, we have to delve deep into the development and history of Parappa the Rapper. The game started its development as soon as the PlayStation was announced in the early to mid 90s and the person at the helm was Matsuya Matsura. After graduating from university, he founded Sai Yes, a popular band in Japan, and then a few years later he worked with Sony's then newly established Sony Interactive Entertainment. He was tasked with creating a new game, but Mitsura did not want to make a game similar to what the other developers were creating, so he went on to make Nana Onsha, which translates to Seventh Sound Company. It was then he had the ambition to create a game about music, more specifically rap, because according to him, it turned out to be the most exciting music to work with and best fit the direction he wanted to go with. But since this sort of thing had never really been done before, he needed to form a team to make this happen. Enter Gabin Ito. Before starting on Parappa the Rapper, he was a magazine editor who was called in to become the scenario writer for the game. It's unknown how early he entered development, because both Matsura and Ito admitted to forgetting how long they've been working together, saying, it was more like one day Ito was just there. Once Ito was on board, he would start working with Ryu Watabe to give a voice to this world, both literally and figuratively. At the time, they decided to make the game's music completely in English, despite it being an almost entirely Japanese production. Here's where it gets interesting. Ryu Watabe was born in Tokyo and lived in Rapongi for a few years before his family moved to the US, where he went to school from kindergarten through high school. Being so well versed in English and Japanese made him go back to Japan for college at Sophia University and major in economics. Originally, he planned to return back to America, but decided to remain in Japan because of the abundant career opportunities available there. With his degree in economics and his general interest in business, it was easy for him to find a job in a general trading firm as a company man. But after only three years, he lost interest and instead chose to become a rapper. That's one hell of a leap. Of course, this wasn't an overnight thing, and he had to get a part-time job at a sorting facility, but he did later find work at CNN as an interpreter. He'd also get extra practice when he'd bring company home, and they would watch Japanese movies without English subtitles. He would translate and act out the movie in real time. During this time, a friend he was working with called him about the development of Parappa the Rapper and said they needed someone to help. When he first heard of the game, he thought it was going to be a dud. But it was rap focused, and that sounded cool to him, so he joined. Watabe went on to interpret all the songs from Parappa the Rappa from Japanese into English, as well as provide the voice for Chop Chop Master Onion, Joe Chin, and the placeholder voices for all the other characters until the final voice actors were decided on. Additionally, Parappa's catchphrase, I Gotta Believe, also derived from his high school football team motto, as well as a music album Watabe wanted to produce, but let it become the series' iconic cheer. Mind you, he did all this on the spot. The lyrics were freestyled while Matsuda recorded from a laptop. I guess his job at CNN and flexing his translator skills for the ladies paid off. But with the voice, creation, and story all coming into place, who's in charge of the vision and identity of Parappa? None other than Rodney Allen Greenblatt. Born in California, Greenblatt started his passion for art at the age of three. Encouraged by his parents and inspired by the works of Hanna-Barbera, and Japanese shows like Astro Boy, Ultraman, and Speed Racer. He would go on to join and graduate from the New York School of Visual Arts in 1982. He was involved with the East Village art scene, which led him to the Whitney Biennial, a biannual art exhibition. It was at this exhibition that he met a Japanese agent who offered him illustration jobs due to his distinctive style. Later, he was approached by another agent named Taki Wayoshi to come work for Sony's licensing division to put his art on merchandise like t-shirts, lunchboxes, and other things like that. This is when Rodney met and was recruited by Masaya Matsura to design the visuals for Parappa the Rapper. While he dabbled in the past making interactive CD-ROMs like Dazzleoids, there was initially some hesitation on Greenblatt's part. 
When he was briefed on the PlayStation and its hardware capabilities, they showed him the 3D model of a dinosaur's head, which he replied to his drawings are flat, cartoon-style drawings, and they might not look good if they were converted to 3D. The hesitation was immediately cleared up by the production staff, saying the environments would be in 3D and the characters would still be in 2D. That and after meeting Ryo Watabe and hearing his singing and writing for the characters, he then realized they were making something great. Greenblatt designed some of the cast for Parappa before the game had even started development. The characters PJ Berry, Katie Cat, and Sonny Funny were drawn before Greenblatt was introduced to the project, along with a few cut characters like Pony Pony. As for Parappa, he was originally meant to be a rapping shrimp, but Greenblatt instead chose to go with a dog because he imagined Parappa to be loyal, kind, funny, and always getting into trouble. A boy always trying to please people. Sounds like a dog, all right. After Parappa was finished being designed, he needed a supporting cast who would be his teachers for the various scenarios. So Rodney Greenblatt drew up and named Chop Chop Master Onion, Instructor Mussolini, Prince Flea Swallow, Cheap Cheap the Cooking Chicken, and lastly, MC King Kong Mushi. Gabin Ito would change the story a little bit to make the characters work after they were designed. Greenblatt commented in an interview with Gama Sutra, in the case of Chop Chop Master Onion, he was just supposed to be a karate teacher. I came up with lots of designs of what a karate teacher might be, but the onion thing they just loved, so they changed the whole thing so that he was the onion master. While some voice actors would be voicing multiple characters, like Ryo Watabe, Armstead Christian, and Richard Bush, the voice actor for Parappa is the most interesting. John Simpson III, known as stage as Dredge Fox, started his music career in the 90s with a few singles with small record labels during that time. He was approached by a friend and fellow musician, Chris Parks, who called him about the project. Dredge Fox had mentioned in an interview, There were no cell phones back then. We used pagers. Word! So I auditioned through a payphone. Afterwards, I auditioned in person for Matsuya Matsura, Ryo Watabe, plus a few staff members, and they loved it. Rodney Greenblatt took their word for it and gave me the thumbs up to bring his character to life. Thanks, RG! Since Parappa was one of the first of its kind, the developers wanted to experiment with the game's mechanics. Early test builds were loose and forgiving compared to the finished game's strict timing. The reason for this is that the developers wanted to allow players to create their own arrangements. Much like a freestyle rap, Matsuda felt it was best to let players remix the songs in order to get a cool rating. He said, What we came to realize is that what we really wanted was for people to be able to bring their own energy and enthusiasm to their performance, so we adopted the improvisational system. When we got that part down, it gave us a swell of confidence that this was going to be a fun game. A real game. Parappa was in the film for about two years, from 1994 to 96, and as things were beginning to wrap up, there were doubts from staff at Sony Computer Entertainment. Matsuri recalls them saying, This is not a game. To which he responded, Even for me, it was not clear whether if this was a game or not. The last stages of development were now underway, the game receiving marketing and forms of commercials promoting the self described rhythm game. The game released in Japan December 6, 1996, and later the following year on September 27th and November 17th in Europe and the US respectively. Rodney Greenblatt designed the boxer in hopes that his distinctive art style would grab people's attention. Before Preppa even touched down in Japanese markets, Rodney Greenblatt had said, We don't know whether the game will sell or not, but we really like it. However, despite their skepticism, the game was selling out by the truckload, and this was even before it became a worldwide hit. A total of 3 million plus copies were sold just of the original game, and that's nothing to sneeze at. And while not directly tied to the development of the game, merchandise was all over the place. I want that hat. The success of Parappa eventually led to Masaya Matsura wanting to stay as a game developer. He had already broken up his band Sai S in June 1996, possibly to continue his work in video games. Quote, If players accept Parappa, then maybe I can make games for a living. It was the fact that players had recognized my work as an actual game that became a driver for me to enter into the gaming industry. Ever since then, Mitsuru has been working on games such as the follow-ups on Jammer Lammy, Parappa the Rapper 2, and many more. And that's roughly the story of Parappa the Rapper, the game that seemingly no chance of succeeding, Sony kind of question, becoming a sleeper hit that took the world by storm from a passionate group of, well, roughly 10 to 12 people 
came with a remarkably memorable game that pretty much invented its own genre. Even their own personal reservations about the gameplay and the fact the series has lay dormant for many years, Crap is an instantly recognizable series with a surprising amount of staying power. Thank you so much for watching our video on the history and development of Parappa the Rapper. If you'd like us to cover another series in a similar fashion, you can let us know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more from us, you can subscribe or check us out on our social media junk, also in the description below. A special thanks to Shmupulations for the permission to use your interviews. Honestly, go check out that website when you get a chance. A lot of good information there. There's also a lot of other interviews that we'll link in the description too. Just check it all out. Go down there. It's all there. And before I sign out, folks, if anyone's interested, I started a new podcast called The Con Squad. If you guys like anime, cosplay, and gaming, me and a few cosplayers try to update every Friday or so, so links in the description. So until next time, folks, take care, and thanks for all the support. New stuff on the way.